Hey guys, we are going to graph an equation with a square root in it today. I hope you're like so excited. Grab your popcorn, okay? So whenever I'm graphing anything, I can always pick a number for x, plug it in, get a y, and then graph that point, right? That's always an option. It's just not always the most efficient option, right? We don't always know which numbers to plug in, right? So when we are plug or sorry, graphing an equation like this, we like to use what we call what is called a parent graph, okay? So if I were just being asked to graph y equals the square root of x, this is what my graph would look like, okay? But we have other things happening here, right? We have a two, a one, a five. So how does that affect this graph? Well, luckily, we know, okay? So first of all, if there's a number out front like there is on this one, which is represented by an a here, we have a two, right? That number is going to either stretch or compress my graph. Let me show you what that means really fast. So the blue is the, the parent graph I just showed you, okay? The green, see how there's a four out front and uh, it's stretched, right? The graph is stretched. And the red, there's a fraction out front and it's compressed, okay? So this one having a two out front, we know it's gonna be stretched a bit more than our parent graph is, right? Also, if there is a negative there, there's not in this one, but I'll link an example where there is. If there's a negative there, it flips our graph down, okay? All right, so I do know that there's going to be some sort of a stretch, right? So I'm just gonna make that note there for myself. Because of that too, this graph is going to be stretched. All right, then the H and K here tell me where my, my starting point shifts to, or my whole graph really, okay? So see, on my parent graph, it starts at zero, zero. These numbers are going to tell me where the new graph is going to start, okay? So this number here, this plus one, tells me how much it shifts to the right or the left. You actually do opposite of the sign on this one. So plus one would normally make me think to the right one, but we're actually gonna go to the left one, okay? And then the number being added or subtracted on the back is how much my graph shifts up or down. This one you stick with the sign, so we're going to go up five. Okay, so as we said before, my parent graph started at zero, zero, but this one we're gonna move to the left one and up five, one, two, three, four, five. So this is where my new graph starts. Okay, from here, there are some teachers that probably all they wanna know is that you know where the new starting point is, you draw how the graph goes, and then maybe you write a little note on the side that says this graph, would have a vertical stretch by a factor of two, okay? That might be all they want. If that's the case, go ahead and do that and you're done. Like this video if it helps you, okay? If your teacher wants you to plug in some more points, we're going to do that now, okay? So we're going to make a table here, okay? So we're gonna plug in some points for X and get a Y. Okay, now since we are working with square roots, not all numbers have pretty square roots, right? Some of them, like the square root of three, who wants to work with that guy, sorry. But I'm going to kind of just remind myself of what we might call our, the nice, easy square roots, right? So the square root of zero is zero. If you need a square root review, I'll link a video in the corner. The square root of one is one, right? Square root of four is two. Square root of nine is three. Okay. Now the numbers in between there have square roots. They're just not super fun numbers to work with. Okay. So if I can, I want to make what's under the square root one of these numbers just so it's easy to solve. Right now, if you're like, I don't care, I will work with decimals. I don't really care. Go ahead and do it. Power to you. Okay. But we are going to try to pick numbers that'll help us. So first of all, I know that if I plug in negative one, I'm going to get five, right? If you wanna double check that, go ahead and do it, but that is one of the points we found, right? Now, I am going to also plug in zero and three, okay? So let's see what happens when we plug those guys in. So let's start right here. I'm gonna use a different color because I want to, okay? So I'm going to plug in zero for x. So I'm gonna have y equals two times the square root of x, I'm plugging in zero, plus one. Fun fact, I always make my square roots too long when I'm plugging things in, sorry, plus five. Okay, now I'm gonna simplify this down. 
So I'm going to have y equals 2 times the square root of 0 plus 1. So that's going to be the square root of 1, which is just 1, right? And 2 times 1 is just 2. So this nice thing just simplifies down to 2, right? Plus 5. And I end up with y equals 7. Okay, so when I plugged in 0 for x, I got 7 for y. Let's go ahead and graph that. 0, 7 is right there. Okay, let's find one more point. We are plugging in 3 for x. So I'm going to have y equals 2 times the square root of x, which we are plugging in 3, plus 1. Oh, I did pretty good there. Plus 5. Okay, so I'm going to have y equals 2 times the square root of 3 plus 1 is 4 plus 5. Okay, square root of 4 is 2, and 2 times 2 is 4, right? So it's going to end up being 4 plus 5, and then y equals 9. Okay, so when I plugged in 3 for x, I got 9 for y. And let's go ahead and put that point on here. 3, 9. Okay, so now I have enough points. I'm feeling pretty confident. My graph is going to look something like that. Okay, I'll pretend like that went through better than it did right there. Okay. <laughs> okay, hopefully this made sense. If you need some more videos like this, some more examples, I'll link a playlist for you. Thanks.